Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Old Guy Firewood. My name is Dick, and it's been uh, just exactly two weeks since we put three totes of wood into this uh, Vivor greenhouse, and I set it up with the fans. Uh, two fans in the end here, sucking air through, trying to provide a constant flow of air across these uh, three bins, these three totes of wood. And uh, we took some measurements last week, and it looked like we were having some progress. I'm going to go ahead and pull some pieces out again today and uh, check the moisture again and record it, and uh, we'll see how it's going. But before we do that, uh, I want to show you something that I picked up this week that uh, I really, really like. And, uh, you know, I've got, a, I've got seven Husqvarna saws and uh, dating back to 1978. And so I'm kind of a husky guy, but uh, I've got two uh, auto-tune saws. I've got a 550 XP Mark II, and I've got a 572 XP. And uh, let me show you here. Prior to buying my 572, um, all my saws ran 20-inch bars. 38050 on all of them, so I could use the same chains. And then I bought this 572 XP to handle the bigger wood, and I got a 28-inch bar for it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, but uh, and I'm, I find myself using that 572 a little bit more. But the 28-inch bar was just a little bit too big. Uh, I wanted something lighter. I wanted to be able to use this 572 XP for something other than the, you know, the 28, 30, 35-inch wood. And so I was looking for a 24-inch bar, um, and I was looking for a light bar. And I did some research, and I found this Samura uh, premium light bar which is uh, about two pounds, eight ounces for a 24 inch bar. And it's uh, comparable within a few ounces of the steel light bar. The steel light bars are rated really good, but I didn't want to deal with the adapter that I needed to, to put it on my uh, Husqvarna saw. And so I did some research and uh, as a result of some recommendations on the Husqvarna uh, uh, page on Facebook, um, I was directed to uh, a guy by the name of, and let me see, I got his card right here, um, Eric, Eric, and I dropped it. Eric Wakeland, and there's uh, Eric's card. I gave him a call, I actually messaged him on Facebook, and uh, he had the premium light bars in stock in 24 inch and so i purchased one from him it was flawless it was shipped uh, quickly packaged very nicely and i'd highly recommend him if you're looking for a, a good light bar uh, i've used samaras i got sugis uh, on some of my other saws and uh, i'm really liking this bar and he sent me a an archer chain and i haven't used archer in the past but uh, he said, give it a try. People are really liking them. And so far, I, I really am liking it. But I'll leave a link to uh, Eric's Facebook page where you can message him and get in touch with him. And uh, if you're looking for a nice light bar, I'd certainly recommend him as a, uh, a guy who's good to deal with and seems very knowledgeable also. Okay, let's back, get back over here to the Vivor greenhouse. And uh, I've dubbed it the wind tunnel for my experiment where... Uh, I'm actually not relying on any heat generated by the greenhouse, but just a constant flow of air 24-7 um, through this wood, over this wood, and I'm uh, going to see how it, how it does. I'm going to go ahead and turn the fans off now, and we'll get in there and pull some pieces out, split them, and check the moisture content, see how it compares to our beginning numbers and our numbers from last week. Okay, I've got three totes in here. I've got a tote of oak, a tote of cherry, and a tote full of poplar. And I'll pull an oak piece out first. Piece of oak. Man, it still feels awful heavy. And, you know, I, my expectations are that the, uh, the oak is going to be the one that's, uh, that's going to be really hard to, to dry. Let me get a similar size piece of cherry. 
piece of cherry. And a piece of poplar. And we'll take them over to the Easton Made Axis and go ahead and pop them open and take some moisture measurements. The whole purpose of this experiment is to see if just constant airflow, even in cooler winter temperatures, uh, will dry wood more quickly than if the wood was sitting out in a tote, just out in, in the natural environment. And uh, last week when I tested the, the pieces that I pulled out of the, the wind tunnel, uh, several people had made comments and asked, well, do you have a control uh, some control wood, uh, wood of the same species, in a bin, in a tote that was split at the same time that's not inside the wind tunnel. And uh, I actually did, but I was not including that in the experiment, but I'm going to start doing that. I have uh, some oak and some cherry that was split at the same time that the oak and cherry that's in the wind tunnel was split, and it's been sitting outside. I don't have any poplar, and uh, I really wasn't planning on doing an experiment that was that scientific where I would have control wood outside simply because I know how fast wood dries. I mean, I've done it long enough and I know I have a good feel for how long it takes to dry oak, split oak, um, poplar, and cherry. And um, my whole purpose was to see if the wind tunnel would dry it quicker. Uh, I know how it dries outside, uh, you know, and if cherry and poplar take three months outside to get to a 20% or less, uh, I wanted to see if I could do it quicker in the wind tunnel. And if oak takes a year, eight months to a year, uh, minimum to dry to 20% or less, I wanted to see if it would do it any quicker in the wind tunnel. But I am going to go ahead and, and take these uh, control pieces that I have, split them, uh, go ahead and log those into the spreadsheet that I've built, and we'll take a look at it. So um, let me get the, the uh, axis started. We'll split them up and uh, we'll get some numbers down. All right, we'll go ahead and get these split up. I'm just running the axis at an idle. Uh, that's all I need to do this. Here's the poplar that came out of the wind tunnel. Give me a good edge there. Here's the cherry that came out of the wind tunnel. The oak that came out of the wind tunnel. And here's the control piece of cherry that was cut at the same time this was and has been outside in a in a tote. And here's the control piece of oak that was split at the same time been sitting outside in a tote. All right, let me get my spreadsheet out here. I'm going to go ahead and record all these numbers and uh, then we'll go over them. Okay, looking first at the poplar that was in the wind tunnel. And that is measuring 23.9%. The cherry that was in the wind tunnel And that is measuring 25.9%. The oak that was in the wind tunnel Twenty-eight point six. 
And now the control pieces, the cherry that's been drying outside. Twenty seven point nine, and the oak that's been drying outside. Thirty two point four. Okay, I think that's all of them. Okay, I'll go ahead and, uh, and put all these numbers on this spreadsheet and uh, include a copy of it uh, at the end of this video. But uh, looking at the oak, uh, when we put it in the wind tunnel, it was at 28.3%. Uh, the piece we measured last week was at 27.8%, so it had dropped some. And uh, the piece we measured today is at 28.6, which is higher than the piece we measured when we put it in. So I don't know if there's that much variance between the splits, the position in the tote, and how the air is moving over them. But actually, uh, that's not too promising. It's 0.3% uh, higher moisture in the oak than when we put it in there. And uh, the control tote, I'm assuming that it was at 28.3%, just like what we put in the wind tunnel, but it's measuring today at 32.4%, which is, uh, is really up there, but uh, substantially higher than what was in the wind tunnel today at 28.6. The cherry, when we put it in the, in the wind tunnel, was measuring 29.4%. <clears throat> Last week it was at 23.7%, the piece we checked. Today it's at 25.9, so it appears to have gone up from what we looked at last week, but still uh, substantially lower than when we put it in there two weeks ago. Um, the control tote, the piece out of the control tote, uh, is measuring 27.9%, which is you know, lower than the 29.4 when we started this experiment, but higher than the, the cherry that's been in the wind tunnel for two weeks at 25.9%. And the poplar, uh, we put it in uh, at 40.9%. Um, last week it was at 27.8%. And this week it's at 23.9%. So we're seeing, that's the only species we're seeing a continual drop over the two week period. Um, down to 23.9 in the wind tunnel. As I said, I don't have a control piece for the poplar, so I don't know how it would be doing if, uh, if it was out just sitting outside versus sitting in the wind tunnel. So um, I think that the, the size of the splits may have something to do with it. Um, I think, you know, as we do this every week, and I expect to do it at least four to six weeks, that we ought to see some trends uh, over that period of time. But let me know what you think. Um, I'm seeing some, you know, some improvement, but uh, not really what I would like to see. And I think part of the problem is that I don't have, um, I don't have the wind, I don't have the air velocity going through that greenhouse wind tunnel that I would like to see. And um, I only have the exhaust fans pulling in and. It's obviously pulling air in because when you put the door down, it'll suck it right in and it's sucking the whole uh, cover in, you can see around the ribs. So it's, it's pulling wind through, but it's not like when you stand in there, it's not like you're standing out on a windy day. So I'm thinking that I need more airflow. And uh, I may consider putting a fan at the entrance, uh, the opposite end from where the exhaust fans are and trying to blow blow air through as well as just pulling it through with the exhaust fans. So um, you know, I hate to change in the middle of the, uh, of the experiment, but uh, uh, we'll go another week. We'll go three weeks and see what kind of results we're having. If it's still pretty minimal, 
I think I'm going to go ahead and put a, a large shop fan on the inlet side of that greenhouse and start pushing air through, again, 24-7, uh, sucking it out the other end and see if that makes a difference. Now, the problem when you do that, when you start adding fans, is that you start adding cost. Uh, with the setup that I have, it's, you know, about $15 a month to run the fans 24-7 for a month. Um, start adding fans, all of a sudden that cost goes up, it doubles or triples. It almost doesn't make it worthwhile. But uh, we'll see. But leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. And uh, it's a fun experiment. We'll see how it does. And I'll keep you posted every week. If you like this sort of thing, please go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, leave a comment below. And uh, as I always tell you, keep moving until next week. Keep moving until I publish another video. And uh, we'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching.